Bertie Granger, born 1882 and dying in 1961, was an Australian-born composer, arranger and pianist. Granger left Australia at the age of 13 to attend the Hock Conservatory in Frankfurt. Between 1901 and 1914, he was based in London, where he established himself first as a society pianist and later as a concert performer, composer and collector of original folk melodies. As his reputation grew, he met many of the significant figures in European music, forming important friendships with Frederick Doulis and Edvard Grieg. In 1914, Granger moved to the United States, where he lived for the rest of his life, though he travelled widely in Europe and in Australia. He served briefly as a bandsman in the United States Army during 1917 to 1918 and took American citizenship in 1918. After his mother's suicide in 1922, he became increasingly involved in educational work. He also experimented with music machines that he hoped would supersede human interpretation. In the 1930s, he set up the Granger Museum in Melbourne, his birthplace, as a monument to his life and works, and as a future research archive. As he grew older, he continued to give concerts and to revise and rearrange his own compositions, while writing little new music. After the Second World War, ill health reduced his levels of activity, and he considered his career a failure. He gave his last concert in 1960, less than a year before his death. Granger stated he wanted to emerge as Australia's first composer of worth. Among various new ideas, Granger introduced his so-called free music theories. He believed that conformity with the traditional rules of set scales, rhythms and harmonic procedures amounted to absurd goose-stepping from which music should be set free. He demonstrated two experimental compositions of free music, performed initially by string quartet and later by the use of electronic theremins. He believed that ideally free music required non-human performance and spent much of his later life developing machines to fulfil this vision. In the late 30s, Granger spent much time arranging his works in settings for wind band. He wrote a Lincolnshire Posy in March 1937 convention of the American Band Masters Association in Milwaukee. In September 1955, Granger made his final visit to Australia, where he spent nine months organising and arranging exhibits for the Granger Museum. He refused to consider a Granger Festival as suggested by the Australian Broadcasting Commission because he felt that his homeland had rejected him and his music. Granger's own works fell into two categories, original composition and folk music arrangements. Besides these, he wrote many settings of other composers' works. Despite his conservatory training, he rebelled against the disciplines of the Central European tradition, largely rejecting conventional forms such as symphony, sonata, concerto and opera. With few exceptions, his original compositions are miniatures lasting between two and eight minutes. Only a few of his works originated as piano pieces, though in due course almost all of them were made into piano versions. He was a true original in terms of orchestration and imaginative instrumentation whose abruptness of expression is reminiscent in style of both the 20th century Second Viennese School and the Italian madrigalists of the 16th and 17th centuries. His music's most individual characteristics is its texture. Different textures are defined by Granger in his music as smooth, grained and prickly. Granger believed that in the performance each player's role should be of equal importance. His elastic scoring was developed to enable groups of all sizes and combinations of instruments to give effective performance of his music. Experimentation is evident in Granger's earliest works. Irregular rhythms, based on rapid changes of time signature, were employed in Love Verses from the Song of Solomons, written in 1899, and Train Music, written in 1901, long before Stravinsky adopted this practice. In search for specific sounds, Granger employed unconventional instruments and techniques solo boxes, theremins, marimbas, musical glasses, harmonium, banjos and ukuleles. Granger wrote, It seems to me absurd to live in an age of flying and yet not be able to execute tonal glides and curves. The idea of tonal freedom, he said, had been in his head since he was a boy of 11 or 12. He had observed the wave movements of the sea. Out in nature we hear all kinds of lovely and touching free non-harmonic combinations of tones yet we are unable to take up these beauties into the art of music because of our archaic notions of harmony. In a 1941 letter, Granger acknowledged that he had failed to produce any large-scale works in the manner of a Bach oratorio, a Wagner opera, or a Brahms symphony, but excused this failure on the grounds that all his work prior to the mid-30s 
had been mere preparation for his free music. Granger was known for his musical experimentation and did not hesitate to exploit the capabilities of the orchestra. Train music was intended for 150 players, and Country Gardens has some lush harmonic invention. Perhaps his most ambitious works was The Warriors, an 18-minute imaginary ballet of frenzied danceable music entrusted to a huge orchestra ensemble incorporating a large tuneful percussion mixture alongside of at least three pianos. Granger considered himself an Australian composer who, he said, wrote music in hopes of bringing honour and fame to my native land. However, much of Granger's working life was spent elsewhere, and the extent to which he influenced Australian music within his lifetime is debatable. His efforts to educate the Australian musical public in the mid-30s were indifferently received and did not attract disciples. Granger was a lifelong atheist and believed he would only endure in the body of work he left behind. The Granger Museum was given little attention before the mid-70s. It was initially regarded as evidence either of an over-large ego or of extreme eccentricity. His failure to be recognised as a composer of anything beyond his popular folk song arrangements was a source of frustration and disappointment for years after his death. The bulk of his work remained largely unperformed. From the 1990s, an increase in the number of Granger recordings has brought a revival in interest in his works and has enhanced his reputation as a composer. Thank you.